let's talk about creating linear keyframe camera animations inside Unreal Engine so that we can render these things out. This is something I've prepared earlier, and it's taken me quite a while to understand and comprehend how Unreal Engine thinks about this. So if you're coming from a program like Das Studio or Blender, there's usually a global timeline object on which you can animate any object in your scene, including cameras. There's usually something like a camera cut track. In Blender, at least, that is the case. But Unreal Engine, it's, I mean, it's all there, but it's all completely different the way they think about it. And it's taken me quite a while. And before I forget, I thought I'd put this onto tape and I'll let you know in the process. So let's create something like this from scratch. For this demo, I'm going to use Epic's Old West Learning Project that you can get for free from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. I'm going to leave a link to the product in the description to the beautiful town of Northward. And this is what it looks like once it comes in. And it already comes with a few camera actors in there, but I think I'm going to go and create my own completely from scratch. Here, there's one that's a camera actor, but we're going to use our own. So if you go and look at the world outliner here, filter this down to all cinematic actors. So if this by, by default, it looks like this, quite intimidating. So let's go and click this filter icon and only show cinematic items. And that means we can, we can see all these cine camera actors here. I want to go and select them all and then just go and delete them so that we can see how to create our own from scratch. And one other thing before we begin, sometimes these projects come in with what's known as maximum quality. And I'm just going to search around, see if I can find some good angles to shoot from. If that is a bit too much for your computer, then take a look under settings up here and have a look at the engine scalability settings. So I think auto is what's set up by default, which sometimes then equates to maximum here. But if that's too much for your computer, change this to something different like medium or high. I've set mine to high, so it's a little bit easier on my hardware. So animations are what we traditionally know as keyframe animations from other apps. They are handled a little bit differently in Unreal Engine. And that is that this global timeline object doesn't exist in the editor. We do have something called a level sequence, and that is something we can use to build our animations. But what happens is that one level sequence, that's technically the timeline, that could go and take care of multiple objects in your scene. But for camera animations, what they recommend is that you have one level sequence per camera that you want to animate. So let's say we had three cameras. That means we need three level sequence objects and we need three camera objects. Each level sequence takes care of a single camera. And then we have a fourth level sequence, which is essentially our master editing sequence, if you will. And there's a few ways that we can go and set up cameras and uh, bring cameras into our scene. So maybe I'll go and start here in this, in this high street here. We have the saloon, so that might be a nice shot to frame up and then we have something like the house next to it we can use we've got the white shot of the street here and then maybe we have something like a bird's eye view so those are three things that i want to show we have maybe this here that's nice if we have this this is a nice entrance shot so we can go and you know tell people this is the town of northwood so let me show you the different ways that we can accomplish this so on one hand, first of all, control spacebar to open your content browser. I'm just going to leave everything in here. We're going to go and right click and under cinematics, we choose a level sequence. And I'm going to call that one cam one, just so that I know this is the level sequence for camera one. If I double click it, something akin to a timeline pops up. And this level sequence can now track anything we want. Like anything I select, I can go and track that object here, actor to sequence, like this sign that I can now go and track. And then I can set keyframes on it. And that's how Unreal Engine thinks about it. So there's no global timeline object. But we don't really want to animate the sign. We want to create a camera. So in order to do that, we can either drop a camera into our level with this option here. So cinematic cine camera actor and then we can go and track that or a level sequence makes it kind of easy to drop in a camera and track it automatically with this icon here create a new camera and set 
it has the current camera cut. So when we do that, this happens. So it's almost the framing that I saw there. And it's already automatically tracking everything I want in my level sequence. That's kind of what I want here. The focal length isn't quite correct, but I can change that directly from the timeline as well. So instead of a 35 millimeter focal length, I think I want to shoot with an 18 millimeter. And then I can see something more, more of a wide angle lens here, or more of a wide angle shot. Notice that I'm automatically piloting this camera. So that's quite nice. And this is kind of what I want as well. Maybe I want to go and just push in a little bit from here. So this is maybe the start. So I'm, I'm okay with the camera component here. I'm going to go and just set a keyframe on the transforms here. It's my first keyframe. And then sort of towards the end, let's say 150 frames in. That's kind of the default length. I'm going to be in a, just a little bit further so that we say, you know, town of Northwood. That's why I set another keyframe. There's also automatic keyframing here if you want to enable that. But in essence, this is now my camera animation for one camera. So this is awesome. We have a level sequence called Cam 1 and we have a Cine Camera Actor in our level. That's just called Cine Camera Actor. I could rename that if I wanted to, but you know, clicking that automatically opens the timeline up here. Let me go and unpilot the camera and then I go back to my my white shot here and maybe I'll maybe I'll move to something like a bird's eye view or maybe the one that comes down the road here. I'll start from here and just go follow down that road that we say this is the establishing shot. So I'll do exactly the same again. Bring up the content browser, right click, select cinematics level sequence. I'll call it cam two and I'll do the same thing again in cam two, double click it to open it. So this is now a different timeline, if you will create a camera here. Same thing. I think I'm going to shoot with an 18 millimeter lens. Under transform, I'm going to click a keyframe here at the beginning and then another one at the end. I can also use this little field here. That's the two end and the red and green handles. Green is the beginning, red is the end. I'm going to go into this camera has been piloted automatically. We'll, we'll move forward to something like that. That should look quite nice. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of hoping, I'm kind of hoping. Set another keyframe and does it look nice? It looks not so bad. Okay, that's my second one. And now the same thing again for the third one so that we get a little bit of practice here. This is going to be cam three. And that might just be a shot of the saloon because I liked it. So I'll go and maybe frame that up. M. Crumpler and Son. This is actually funny. Let me do that. And this is just, it's funny because this set was made by Decogon Studios, which is a great, great outsourcing studio. And the head of production, there's Clinton Crumpler. And I think that's just super funny that he smuggled that little tidbit of information in. So big shout out to Clinton. It's just amazing work that these guys are doing. Unbelievable. And yeah, this, this learning project's just, you know, that's just, that's just funny. So let's go and frame that up. M Crumpler and Son. I don't know if he has a son, but that's just, that's just funny. Oh, I was on the first keyframe there. I didn't mean to do that. So let's go and zoom in a little bit more like so have that house in the background and that is that so boom keyframe and now we have three nice little animations so in order to edit them together as it were we need to create a new level sequence and then use a shots track to literally select one camera per shot and that's how we can mix them together and therein also lies a bit of the pitfall there um, we can do that just by creating another regular level sequence Unreal Engine has a couple of other objects, actually. There's a template sequence and a camera animation sequence. I think Unreal Engine 4 also had this concept of a master sequence, which we can also create from up here. This is the cinematics menu, and you can go and add a master sequence from there. But truth be told, I just don't get it. It adds a level of complexity that I just don't understand. Maybe it has a major benefit, but I, I'm not at that point to, to comprehend what that might be. So I'm going to go and just create a regular level sequence here. This is also a way to create a level sequence and put it directly into the level. Um, I'm okay with the content browser though, and I'll go and select a level sequence again, and I'm going to call that one master 
sequence, just so that I know this is essentially my editing object. When I open that up, it's of course empty as I expected it to be. So now I can go and add a track to it here. And this is going to be a shot track. And that shot track can only be inside a timeline once, a bit like a fade track. Some things can be in there multiple times, like audio tracks you can have multiple, but a shot track we can only have one. So once we have one and we try to add that one again, it's grayed out. But that's perfect. That's all we want. So the magic now begins in us being able to park our playhead where we want and then pick an existing sequence and drop it at that point. So I want my first one to be at the zero point here, of course, so we'll do that. And then we go and just click this little icon here, click a shot, and then this menu comes up that shows me all the level sequences that I have available and nothing else, which is kind of cool. So let's go and start with camera one. I'll click that and it will go and populate it into my timeline here. So there's a few things that are now beginning to be a little weird, but there are explanations for it. So I will show you what I know. If I move my playhead, it's a little bizarre that I'm thinking, well, I don't actually see if my camera is still animating. So what's what's going on here? So that's the first puzzle, I'd say. The second one is I'm seeing these frames here. So I'm dealing in frame numbers and perhaps that's not what I want. Perhaps I want to see seconds or non-drop frame time code and stuff. So that is actually easy to change under this field where it says 30 FPS. Click that and choose show time as something else. So maybe seconds. Seconds would be frame rate independent. Frame rate can also be set on export when we come to render the sequence. So, you know, don't get too hung up about the frame count. Maybe I'll use seconds. Or if you're into editing, then you might also prefer something like the non-drop frame time code. So you have hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So totally up to us. Maybe I'll use seconds because that's just a little easier for me to time my animation. And that is currently also five seconds. So that's kind of the default length of my shot. Since I have three shots, I want this to be a little bit longer. So let's go and make it something like 800 frames at the bottom and then drag the red hand a little bit out. So this is the end of my animation, maybe like 15 seconds or so. That's the end. If you want to zoom in or out, control scroll mouse wheel makes that happen. Or you can use this little thing at the bottom here to zoom in or out of the timeline. I haven't worked out if there's a shortcut to show you the whole timeline yet, like a tab or control zero or something like that, but I, I don't know if that exists. So that's number one. Number two, why can't we see a preview of what happens in our master shot here? Well, we can with this icon here, this little lock viewport to shots. If I click that, that's essentially a way for us to switch from the perspective view, as it were, where we're running around in the level to the thing we've currently got displayed on our timeline. And you can switch that on or off. If you wanted to switch that off and then go somewhere else and examine something else, you can do that then switch back to the shot track, which is now showing you what you're actually putting together. So fairly cool. I didn't actually want that to be my opening shot. I'm thinking that might actually be a nice closing shot. So I can go and move this shot away to a different position. We can talk about that as well. But now I'm going to go and put my playhead to the end of that clip, something like that. And then I'll go and click that little shot icon again. And then I'll go and pick camera two, for example. And that now neatly arranges itself next to where I had my playhead. So this is going to be a cut between here and there, but it doesn't have to be. So I can also go left click and drag this to a different track. So now I have two shot tracks and now I can go and move these into an AB editing situation here, if you're familiar with that. So this now allows me to maybe come out a little bit earlier out of my first shot by just shortening that. And I can go and use this to come in a little bit later. So this means I'm not changing the actual camera animation, but I'm coming in a little bit later to make that just look a little better. If I go back to this and move between them, I can see that my animation kind of comes to the end. It lingers there and this one hasn't quite started. So if I wanted to interpolate between them, I can just go and make this a little bit tidier like so and like so. It's entirely up to you if you want to see shots as AB lined up like this or next to one another. Totally personal preference. 
I find it a little easier to see him in a checkerboard fashion there. And maybe this is where I want to have my next shot. I'll go and click shot again. And then I'll use cam three. And that's the Clinton Crumpler money shot. I like it. I like it. Perfect. So this is what that is. I might want to come in a little later here on this shot as well. And then I can go and press play and see the whole thing unfold. So that's how the basics work. So that, you know, that looks nice. I could add a fade track as well. I, I think, I think timing is great actually for something I've put together just in such a short amount of time. Oh yeah, there's something else. If you wanted to put the animation at the end of the last clip, you can just press end and then the red bar snaps to that position. And then, you know, that's where the animation ends. You can move these around if you think, hey, this first one, the Clinton Crumpler shot was actually the one I want to start with. And then I want to end on Welcome to Northwood. I can go and do that. Just move this out of the way. Put this kind of here. Put this over to the beginning. So it's kind of a left click and drag affair. If they don't move on top of one another, you can just put them onto virtual other tracks. Just, you know, arrange them as you see fit. And then see if that looks okay here. Perhaps we should have started with the shot on the high street. Maybe this is actually a much better shot to begin with. But, you know, that's what's kind of cool to play around with an animation like this and just get make creative decisions now rather than having to render everything out and go, yeah, actually, this wasn't how I had expected it. Spend another five hours rendering stuff out. It's, you know, it's um, it's nice. We don't, we don't have to do that in Unreal Engine. We can be very just, you know, see what works and if something does work you go hey that's that's awesome now if there was anything that we wanted to queue with blueprints that is also possible if you want to marry these things up press n to end that animation there that is also possible i can collapse my shots track here then it's all neatly collapsed i can go and create what's known as an event track here and that is kind of cool i don't have anything in the level that i can demonstrate this with but just the principle i can create a trigger event track and now i can park my playhead let's say Somewhere in the middle, let's say here, I wanted something to fall over, like whatever, this this wagon wheel. If I had a separate animation, if I had blueprint code that I would want to trigger, I can go and set a keyframe here that sets that keyframe that currently doesn't do anything. But if I go and double click on that keyframe, watch what happens. The blueprint editor comes up and I now have a custom event that gets triggered at this point. So now I can hook code into this, whatever I wanted to queue in the animation at that point, I can go, I mean, just for demonstration purposes, maybe I'll go and put a print string in here and say, you know, do stuff. It's not going to, whoops, it's not going to actually print anything out because that only happens in the debug version of the game. But if I had something, I can hook that into here and I can kick off blueprints. And you know, that is, that is kind of cool. So that's how animations work. If you wanted to make a change to any of the camera animations, if we just don't worry about the events track right now. And I'm thinking, hey, I would like for this to maybe start a little bit higher. Then I can go and select this shot and just double click it. And that gets me into the camera animation that I've made here on this shot. Notice when I scrub through, I still see the master timeline as it intercuts between things. And I might not want that. I'm thinking, hey, I want to actually tweak the entry point in this animation. So how do I do that? Easy. Switch to that camera and preview it. Currently, we're previewing the camera cuts track. This is not what we want. Disabling it brings me back into my level editor to run around to the perspective view, if you will. I can go ahead and pilot the camera. By left clicking, I can see a little preview here. But if I wanted to pilot it, then I can see this is what that looks like. And this is not actually the camera that I want to change, is it? So hmm, that's interesting. Let me go back to the master sequence then. And choose the camera that I want to change. I was on the wrong camera, wasn't I? <laughs> I meant this one here. So this here is the camera that I want to change. So double click into that, go and select that, and then also go and pilot that. So maybe I want to be further at the top in the beginning, like so, I don't know, something like that. I'll just set a keyframe here so I can replace these in a moment and then towards the end this is kind of my new shot i want to maybe have this from slightly further down like so 
I don't know, maybe set that as a new transform. And then you can just go and take these keyframes away and then go and park those towards the end. That's how the shot ends. And these ones here, take those away and put those at the beginning. And now we have a different shot here. So the cool thing is now, if I wanted to go back to the master sequence, I can do it from the breadcrumbs menu here. So this is my current sequence but the one above it is being shown here so i can go back here and the changes are there immediately if i want to go and preview them so i'll go and lock my viewport to shots like so and now i can see what this looks like in action so we're coming in here and then we're going this way and then we're going that way so now all i need to change is i think the timing of the animation i don't want that lurking moment there so i'm going to go and bring this one slightly forward here yeah, so I think I want to come in here. So I'll go and take this out, crop it to here, pop that here. And then the end was, the end was kind of okay, wasn't it? Yeah, the end, no, the end was, could be a little bit shorter as well. So I want there to be movement in there like so. It's a little fiddly, left click and drag the end, snap it to the playhead. We can go and pop that into here, close the gap and now this should look okay. Yeah, I think I do prefer it if I have an AB editing track here. It's just, it's easier for me to see which camera is where. So if we wanted to change any of the timings as well, that's also no problem. If I'm thinking, hey, this was nice, but maybe it was a bit fast. Maybe I want to extend that, double click into this, and then change the timing of this animation. So control, scroll the mouse wheel and say all these keyframes. Yeah, I think they've made a change in Unreal Engine 5.2 already that you can deal with keyframes a little bit differently. So if I wanted to put this to say eight seconds, so that's, that's gonna be a little bit easier on the eye, drag the end of the clip out a little bit to here. Now this here, this red and green, you can see these two things. This is the beginning and the end of this sequence. But then we have another green and red bar. And that's where I've made the in point on my master timeline. So that I can't change from here because that's just showing me a reference here. So this I need to now go and drag back on the master sequence. If I wanted to preview that, of course, go and select my camera here. Look in groups. <laughs> looking good and then it snaps away because it's been it's cut away from that so let's go and change that on the master sequence this here preview this is where it gets really just you know frazzles your brain doesn't it so this and that they need to come back and this guy can be extend whoops this guy can now be extended this is why it just you know messes with your brain so much. That was the end. I want to come out a little further here. Then we do this little overlap, perhaps. Same here. And then what does that look like? Now we have a slower path here. So very nice. I, I do like it, but is that okay? Timing wise, it's good. And then that is also very nice here. Timing wise, it's nice. So very interesting. It's just that it took me a while to understand the principle. And I hope this has brought it closer to you as well. Oh, one other thing I can show you on this master timeline here. We had the events track, we have a shots track. I can also fade in and out with a fade track. That's also a little bit weird. It's not that we can do fancy transitions here. You'd probably have to do this on the actual level sequences, but we have a master one here. So once again, it's a single track thing, uh, fade. And the fade track, I might go and delete my events track here. That was just, I just wanted to show you that. The fade track is something a little bit exotic in that it has a float value and that is zero when there's no fade and one when there is a fade. If we go to the very beginning and we wanted to have a fade in, then this value would be one, uh, which means we're now seeing a black picture. But that's cool. We're going to create a keyframe here and then we're going to go and say maybe a one second fade in. So at one, we want to be at zero again. Unreal Engine sets the keyframe automatically. Now we have a fade in here. That's kind of nice. So likewise, and if we wanted to have a fade out at the end, let's do the same thing. Go to the end and set a keyframe with a value of one here. And then since we're thinking of keyframe pairs, let's go zoom in here and then go forward by one second. So I think we're at kind of 13 and a half seconds or 12 and a half. That's why we want to begin to fade out. So this is a keyframe that needs a zero again. So now we can go and 
fade out here the town of the town of Northwood. If we wanted to do that, I mean, it's you know it's debatable since we're starting with an establishing shot. Perhaps we want to actually go and leave it there, so we maybe only want a fade in. Who knows? So yes, that is how to create an animation. Perhaps in the next episode, I can show you how to render these out because that is also something that is a little bit, what's the word, um, crazy. So stay tuned for that.